Colorado's largest single-day increase in reported deaths from COVID-19 indicates we are not past the peak of the pandemic here, and there is new reason to doubt the model that told us that we were through the worst of it. Denver prepares a large new homeless shelter, trying to keep hundreds of new cases from crashing the healthcare system. You're wearing a mask? Great. Now, are you wearing it correctly? How you can help healthcare workers with a good meal and a teenager's secret stash as his mother overjoyed. That's next. There is danger in easing off the brakes too early. Coloradans know that. You know that that's why there are those large highway signs above I-70 as you come down the foothills that warn truckers you are not down yet. Health experts are flashing those same warnings at Coloradans that we are not through the worst of the COVID-19 pandemic here. Just one day after everybody got so excited about one out-of-state model that showed that we could be past our peak, we have seen our largest single-day increase in reported deaths. We now know that 179 of our neighbors have died of COVID-19. That is an increase of 29 since the last daily update. There are 5,429 confirmed cases in our state after testing 28,000 people. 1,079 Coloradans have been hospitalized since this all started. The state does not tell us daily how many were released, how many recovered. It once housed the National Guard. It served as a shelter for those at World Youth Day in the 90s. Now the National Western Center in Denver will provide a roof over the heads of hundreds of people who have no home. Denver Mayor Michael Hancock announced today that the National Western's Hall of Education is going to be converted into a complex that can house 600 men who are homeless with proper social distancing for health and safety within that complex. It will open Thursday. The Denver Coliseum may be turned into a women's shelter. Discussions to find a safe place for people who are homeless in the city have dragged on now for weeks. But the health experts agree that COVID-19 sweeping through that particular vulnerable community could send hundreds of people to the hospital at once. There has not been an objective greater than our efforts to get on the other side of this curve over the last six weeks. We cannot expect that we can be successful in doing that if we are not properly, properly serving sheltering and providing proper physical distancing with our residents who are homeless. They are as much a part of who we are as a city and a need to make sure that they're protected and healthy and safe is equally as important as it is for the rest of us. The city tells us they found another 150 hotel and motel rooms for people who need to be isolated due to symptoms or recovery. 150 more to bring the total to 270. City estimates it needs more than 3,000 of those rooms. Advocates for the homeless are tearing into Governor Jared Polis for his handling of the situation regarding that community. Colorado Coalition for the Homeless wrote that it is extremely disappointed that Polis will not deploy the National Guard to help set up and maintain a large-scale shelter in Denver. Those advocates say that sending the National Guard to help at the overcrowded smaller shelters only exposes the guard to COVID-19. They want the guard at the National Western Center in the Coliseum. And the Colorado Coalition for the Homeless is also calling on the governor to lean on hotel and motel operators who are refusing to cut deals to allow people to stay at their properties. I want to invite you to join me at 7 o'clock tonight here on 9 News for a live town hall with Governor Polis. More than 500 Coloradans from every corner of this state have sent in video questions for the governor. Our commercial-free virtual town hall begins at 7 o'clock on 9 News, 9news.com, and the 9 News app. As someone who lives in a household with an at-risk person, I appreciate every single one of you who chooses to wear a mask. So, to protect us, we've talked about what the doctors say, that wearing a mask primarily protects somebody else if you're asymptomatic and have no idea that you have the coronavirus. But the mask also provides you some protection if you're wearing it correctly and not just futzing with it all the time. Our Marshal Zellinger is along now with an experiment that shows that wearing a mask incorrectly, Marshall, might not be such a great idea. Well, I'm, I'm wearing my mask. I'm good. I'm safe, right? Well, then my mask starts to bug me a little bit and I start doing something like this. Read my lips. Is it safe? Not exactly anymore. 
Before you even put your mask on in the morning, make sure you have clean hands. While your mask is going to protect others from you, you need to make sure your hands are clean in the first place so that you're not contaminating your face when you put the mask on fresh in the first place. Now I've got clean hands and I've got my homemade mask that I learned how to make from my colleague Ryan Harris' social video. And once you're done securing it, no more touching your mask, no playing with it, unless you have clean hands. And I'll show you why using something called glow germ. This simulates germs on your hands and can only be seen under black light. I've cleaned my phone and my keyboard, no evidence there, but look at my hand. There's the glow germ. And look at my mask, nothing on it or my face yet. So even though I'm trying to be safe, you'll see over a time lapse here how often I'm probably gonna play with my mask and what that means for both my face and all the germs around me. It's inevitable, but after a while, I'm gonna start playing with the mask because it's either fogging up my glasses or getting too hot or it's starting to slip a little bit. I probably shouldn't have wore a blue bandana, but it's noticeable there, but it's really noticeable around my cheeks and on my nose. And if that wasn't obvious enough, here's my phone and the keyboard. This is really another way to showcase how often we touch our face without even knowing it. Uh, it's also a way to emphasize why it's so important to wash your hands, even if you think you're doing it good. I'm gonna move the light for a second. This is the black light. I I've tried washing my hands a few times since I put the glow germ on. I clearly have not been doing a good enough job. It's really in that, uh, you know, under the cuticles and in that dry skin area that we're all experiencing because we're washing our hands oh so much, Kyle. Right now, there are Coloradans across the state that are cringing at the thought of you bringing your little glow stuff into their house and finding out just how <laughs> filthy it is. But all good reminders. We want people to be well protected. Thank you, Marshall. That state by state national model of COVID-19 that painted such a positive picture of what's happening in Colorado. It's time to reconsider what we saw and what so many people got excited about. This is the IHME model out of the University of Washington, which suggested yesterday that Colorado was through the worst of the pandemic here. We told you that Colorado's, Colorado's own state experts disagreed with those findings. And today, the Colorado Hospital Association weighed in. The IHME models thought that Colorado was going to need 119 ventilators as of today. Hospitals surveyed report that more than 400 of them are in use. So let's talk about these models and how they play into our hopes and fears, and most importantly, how they guide decisions made by government agencies. Roger Pilkey Jr., a professor at CU who studies how science impacts politics, he told us that we just need a better system for doing this. We have a lot of wonderful scientists and experts and modelers who are out there working, trying to anticipate the consequences of both the pandemic and our policy responses to it. Um, but what we really need is a, an expert body who can take all that information, bring it together, make sense of it so that policymakers don't have to. So that makes sense. They take that University of Washington model and look at it and compare it with the CU model. We know that private health care companies like Centura Health in Colorado are doing their own models. He suggests one group looking at all of them and trying to come up with a consensus. So the CU model predicted that the peak is going to vary in Colorado, that it's still coming, but it's going to vary based on how well we do the social distancing. It's predicting May to sometime this summer. And just always remember, better social distancing now means a later peak, which means the hospitals have a better chance to deal with that surge. Let's go back to our very favorite viewer question these days. What can I do to help? Well, you can help feed healthcare workers who need a good meal while they are right in the thick of this fight. Now, before you just order a pizza and have it sent to your local ER, let's bring in Steve Steger, who has been talking to hospitals about what they want and need on this front. Steve? And Kyle, yeah, we've heard about those high-profile cases, you know, the Peyton Manning buying a meal for every floor of UC Health or the Avs player that did the exact same thing over at St. Anthony's. But I heard today about thousands of folks who have bought thousands of meals for healthcare workers in the metro area. In fact, the donations are generous enough that hospital systems have had to set up protocols to handle them. Centura Health, Health One, and UC Health now all have online forms where people can request to make a donation. They'll then help you figure out the logistics of it. Uh, we heard stories about neighbors raising money, then partnering with restaurants to provide pre-wrapped meals 
People also have donated shelf-stable food to create food pantries inside hospitals. The doctor in charge of Incident Command at Centura Health told us today that these healthcare workers need something they can grab and take home at the end of a long day. Many of these caregivers are working around the clock, which sometimes they, that means that they leave at 7 in the morning and don't get home till 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock at night. For many of those people, getting to the grocery store is difficult. You're probably aware that our grocery stores have limited hours and limited availability of food. Um, and so those simple donations can make the world of difference to people. That really struck me because I had heard so much about the pizzas and the hot meals that were delivered during the actual shift work. But thinking about the aftermath of the shift was was really kind of put things into perspective. So I put the contact information for Centura, UC Health, and Health One and Denver Health actually up on 9news.com if you're looking to try to help out. They just ask that you don't just call the pizza place and say, hey, deliver a whole pie to the ER department at Denver <laughs> Health because that's not going to work when they roll up and they're busy with other things, you know? Yeah, you want to do it right, but sometimes a thank you just not just does not suffice. Like the fact that I will be buying that man there, Steve Sager, a beer. Uh, those of you at home don't know, but every night that I'm doing the show from home, either Marshall or Anusha Steve is standing by in case something goes wrong with my home studio. Last night it did go wrong with about two minutes to spare ahead of the show. So Steve got two minutes notice that he was going to anchor all of Next, and you did a great job. So thank you, my friend. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. It was interesting, but the working from home, it's part of the fun, right? I heard a lot of it stories actually of from fun. a lot of from a lot of different people who said they had to improvise and things like that uh, with this work at home thing. So, you know, we're all in this together. Yeah, you made it look easy, brother. Thank you. Ultimate Frisbee is a team sport. We don't do team sports right now, unless you're creative. And while Colorado's real bears are waking up from hibernation, their softer stand-ins are ready to be found by kids around town right now. And that's next. Tonight's statewide shout out goes to a group we often ignore because of our discomfort talking about the end of life. But you know what? Morticians, Colorado appreciates you. Several next viewers asked us to recognize the 
last responders, as Stu called them, working long hours to take care of families that cannot grieve as they would like to in this time of distancing. So funeral home employees, morticians, everyone who cares for us when one of our loved ones passes away, just wanted to remind you that we appreciate you. And the fact is, some of those last responders are at additional risk these days. There's a next viewer who wrote into us concerned about her daughter. She's a funeral director on the Western Slope, and she wondered whether her daughter needs to be taking special precautions around people who have died of COVID-19. Nine Health's Dr. Pyle Coley says that's true. Even though they're not breathing, it is possible that you could come into contact with contaminated secretions. Therefore, it is critically important if you're a healthcare worker doing a post-mortem or a funeral home worker, such as a mortician or staff dressing the body, that you use extreme caution and full personal protective equipment when handling the body. A lot of Coloradans are going to great lengths to ensure that people have dignified memorials, even in this time. If you missed the story by our Steve Sager and photojournalist Chris Hansen showing us how military honors currently work at Fort Logan these days, it's well worth a few minutes of your time. We've posted it on the next Facebook page. Sunshine and 70s again today. Enjoy it while it lasts. We've got a storm brewing off the coast of California that could bring snow by the weekend. We even had 80s on the map in southern Colorado. The average high this time of year is 59. We've got that storm coming our way from California, but between now and Thursday, dry with a bit of wind along the foothills. Not much moisture coming in here until Thursday and Friday. It'll be rain first and then snow probably by Easter Sunday. Tonight, fair skies and 39. Tomorrow, we've got sunshine and and highs back near 70. Thursday, we begin the cooling trend with a chance for showers both Thursday and Friday, mixing with snow Saturday. Easter Sunday, it'll be cool. Not a bad day to start, but Sunday night into Monday, one to three inches of snow, and that cool weather trend continues into early next week. Coloradans keep getting creative to figure out how to socially distance with some style. Like the group that meets on Saturdays to play ultimate frisbee at O'Kane Park. They stand far apart enough, but you know, you don't want to all be touching the same frisbee. That wouldn't be a great idea now. So these guys threw together a virtual version. You've been stuck at home for weeks. Kids are climbing the walls. Why not let them out to hunt bears? With your supervision, of course. Because unsupervised kids can get into all kinds of trouble. What do we have here? That's next.
You hear those howls every night at, at 8 p.m.? Chance for people to get out there and, and show some love for healthcare workers. Maybe blow off a little steam. What's that? Go ahead. Go ahead, howl. Why? Do, do it one more time, Grandma. Well. Do it one more time. <laughs> oh! mate <laughs> <laughs> grandma's got a sense of humor and she's got a little bit of a mouth on her too <laughs> this is out in elizabeth where when you howl the neighborhood dogs howl back sophia sent me the video that's her grandma cookie they say the whole family's going to be out there howling tonight not just grandma it is bear hunting season in arvada kids get most of the bears they're teddy bears placed in windows so that families out for a walk, because what else are you going to do these days, have a new way to amuse themselves. They've been going bear hunting. They are the kids in Arvada neighborhoods, leading the way on walks to discover bears in windows. About the bears? Big bears, little bears, panda bears, any bear to keep the kids entertained. Give them something to do during the day when he's cooped up in the house. Yeah, they actually really enjoyed it. Um, there was one house that had a whole bunch of bears in their front yard. Uh, they were hidden in bushes and trees. It was wonderful. And don't think this just makes the kids happy. I don't have any kids. This is my only kid. And I don't have any teddy bears either. No kids, no teddy bear, no problem. I used to have that wonderful poopy emoji pillow that I received for Christmas years ago, and I thought the kids would like it. Not everything has to be a teddy bear. In fact, it turns out for Hannah Hutchinson... I do not know anything about that. You don't even have to know about the bear hunt. You have the biggest bear in the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, he's a very happy bear. It's making everyone a little more happy. I mean, really, who doesn't like a teddy bear? That is helping kids, I don't know, just give them something nice to look at, something happy during these weird, really weird, tough times while they're taking walks. With a side of humor. Yeah, I thought it would be different. For next, I'm Tom Cole. As toilet paper becomes a scarce commodity, parents, you may need to have a difficult dis discussion with your children. That and your feedback next.
Hey dude, your mom found your stash and she's really excited to get to use it. Libby told me that she found the bags hidden inside the garage. She thinks her son put them there for when his friends would go TP somebody's house in the neighborhood. Libby told me she is just thrilled to have found some toilet paper. She's not even mad about it. Want to re remind you to stick around seven o'clock tonight. We will have our live statewide town hall with Governor Jared Polis. More than 500 Coloradans have sent in video questions. This will be carried on five television stations and six radio stations around the state. We hope you'll tune in. An anonymous message asking, are you actually going to ask the governor tough questions? Like, why are people flying into our state and not being quarantined? That was an anonymous question. We're not going to do anonymous ones tonight, but actually that question is part of the mix. And Steve says, your hair isn't looking as poofy. You break quarantine? I did not, Steve. My wife broke out the Turbo Dog Clipper Kit. See you next time.